I'm Helen Kamak. Um, I'm here at Stuck, just about to open a show called Beneath the Surface of Skin. There are two bodies of work in it. One is called Kesi Pufade, uh, which was made entirely uh, in Italy when I had a six month residency there in uh, 2018. And the second uh, body of work is, they call it Idlewild, which was made just before the first lockdown that we had in the UK. Um, yes, which is, consists of some billboards um, and, and a shorter film. Kesi Pufare is probably one of the biggest projects I've ever made. So there's a triple screen film, um, there's a research table full of all the books that were either given to me or I bought, I used for research in some of the institutions that I spent time in in Italy. Um, there are um, lino cut prints, there's a six metre um, individually kind of uh, hand printed uh, screen print. There's something about the interconnectivity around the work. And the thing that ties everything together was an interest that I had in the idea of lament. For me, lament is about loss and longing. It's about resistance and resilience. So it's about this process where we maybe understand what we've experienced and then we figure out somehow consciously or subconsciously what we will do with that. And sometimes there's a kind of resisting of something that might be happening to us, but always there's a kind of resilience that we have because lament is about a process. <laughs> Chorus One, which I guess is the, is the foundation of the whole project for Kesi Pufare, is, um, is a work that has interviews in it, it has lots and lots of landscape footage, um, so it takes you, it walks you around different kind of places in Italy um, and you meet different people and you might not meet the person alongside the landscape that they come from and that's the kind of moving and shifting around and sometimes you do. Um, but one of the things I suppose that's, that's really important is the, the way that sound and song ties all of those experiences, so the landscape and the meeting of people sitting, talking to you, telling you their stories, um, is the importance of sound and music for that. And some of the music I chose, and I, it was kind of through research, and some of the music was chosen for me, by, for example, Federica, who is dancing in, uh, in Chorus One. Her lament was describing having been a contemporary dancer, having had a car accident, and we sat over dinner one day and she talked about her sadness at that being the end of her, her dancing career. And I asked her whether she would dance um, for the film, and she, oh, no, no, I couldn't possibly. Um, and then the next day she said to me, actually, I've thought about it, I didn't sleep all night, I'll do it. You go a fishing. They call it Idlewild, was, uh, is a film that I made as part of a residency um, at a place called Bicing, an arts centre in Cambridgeshire. And I just sat in this space and looked through a skylight window and I just wrote. I just sat there and before I knew it, I was writing. And I realised what I started to write about was being in the space of nothingness. And it was a space that I hadn't had for a really, really long time, maybe ever. And I started to look at the politics around idleness and nothingness um, and who is allowed to be idle, who is allowed to be um, in this space where they can think and feel and not be part of a labour machine. Um, taking it historically back to the lazy person who in my understanding and readings I've had, the lazy black person, the person who's poor, the kind of person who drags on the state, the kinds of narratives that we're used to hearing about particular um, individual stories, but also kind of collective stories. The stories that are kept in place in order that nothing changes and people who are oppressed or suppressed remain that way. Lazy bones sleeping in the sun. Whenever I ask a question, it's also a provocation. So it's asking people to think about these spaces and whether they think or feel they're important, whether they think or feel they have them in their lives. If they don't, what does that mean? If they do, when does it happen? And I guess that's the basis of everything that I make really, is asking people to think and feel. I don't ever feel that anything can be achieved if you can't think and feel at the same time. Um, which doesn't mean that you can't intellectualise anything, but I think most of my, the most interesting intellectual thought is the th kind of thought that also touches the emotions. Um, because if you can't feel, how can you really get your mind working? For the sound
sound of the trumpet clear. Obviously, I want somebody to feel completely engaged by something that I've made, otherwise I wouldn't be making, you know. I want to say something and so I would like whatever it is I'm trying to say to be received. But I also know that people receive from their own place, space, their own experience, and that's the bit that's exciting. So I suppose what I would like is for somebody to come in um, and be fascinated or be interested or to be soothed or to be touched in some way like sometimes some of the work that I make is sad sometimes it, it feels quite painful to listen to or to hear that's what I'm reaching out for is to be able to make a connect of some kind and sometimes it's through my own experience or sometimes it's through bringing other people's experiences into conversation the sound of the trumpet clear